17th century villages. Although England, France, and Italy are represented, it's Germany that seems to have caught Alex's attention. Well, this is the Oktoberfest. We're in Fest House, and the eatery is an important part of any theme park. Ich habe an intense hunger. For better or worse, Alex grabs a light snack of sausages, sandwiches, and sweets before heading out to the white knuckle thrill rides. Help me! The first stop, Drakenfire, a steel roller coaster with speeds up to 60 miles per hour. It's the fastest roller coaster here, upside down five times. Sayonara! <laughs> Fortunately, my vertebrae snap like a twig, or I'd get up. But uh, the doctor should be here shortly, and then we'll continue on with our adventure. When I was a kid, I used to go to the theme parks all the time, and my goal was to come home as ill as possible. So uh, it's really about abuse, I'd say. Now that he's a little older and a lot wiser, Alex appreciates the fact that rides aren't the only attraction here at Busch Gardens. And you got a place that also has a lot of other stuff, and sort of you can stroll around and and enjoy nature and, you know, be a bit more laid back. It's a European-themed park. It's one of the most beautiful parks. In fact, it has been named the most beautiful theme park in America. Providing something for everyone is of paramount importance to Anheuser-Busch, the beer brewing conglomerate which owns Busch Gardens. And this is the family aspect of the company that really rounds out the business. Yeah, my here, look at mommy. So we take a great pride in, in the uh, Anheuser-Busch theme parks and really spend a lot of energy making them the best they can be. The theme park business was actually an afterthought. In 1959, the brewery opened a hospitality center in Tampa, Florida. They dubbed it Busch Gardens. Sixteen years later, the gates opened to another Bush Gardens, this time on 360 wooded acres in Williamsburg, Virginia. Oh, no! What you do? <laughs> and then in 1989, Anheuser-Busch purchased the SeaWorld Parks located in Florida, Ohio, California, and Texas. Every year, Anheuser-Busch unveils a new attraction at each park. SeaWorld of Texas recently premiered a ride called Sky Tubin. While SeaWorld of Ohio debuted their interactive habitat, Dolphin Cove. But perhaps the most ambitious undertaking is the Wild Arctic exhibit at SeaWorld of Florida. It's a new realm for, for all of us, and guests will come up close face to face with live animals like polar bears and beluga whales and uh, harbor seals. It's, it's really exciting. Back at Sister Park Bush Gardens, Alex Winter is being schooled on the newest attraction in Williamsburg. The most thrilling new attraction, don't get scared, is Escape from Pompeii, which is located over in Italy. Not the thing to do if you've eaten a large plate of lasagna. You get on a 20-person boat, mm -hmm. you go up a lift, and you go through the ruins of Pompeii. It's like going through ancient Rome. Yeah. And there are all kinds of fiery special Ooh. effects. Statues fall over, beams come crashing down. There's oh, no my. turning back now, folks. And just when you think you've made a successful escape from Pompeii, there's a heart-stopping five-story waterfall to navigate. <laughs> However, Alex seems no worse for the wear. First shower I've had in weeks. After all, he's figured out how to put the amusement in amusement park. It's really about abuse, I'd say, um, is at the heart of every good theme park. I think I'm going to go to the... Land well, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed a little tour through Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, Virginia. I thought it was a rather excellent adventure. Uh, oh, how do you... That was a stinker. All right, Jeeves, hit the button. Let's roll. Ah. East journey through the best theme parks in America keeps on rolling. A little later, David Charvet braves the Indiana Jones adventure.
And up next, Dolly Parton travels back to the future as only she can. Well, hello, I figured out you should just probably get in my natural position from the 50s and climb in the back seat. <laughs> But first, it's time to check in on our American Gladiators. It looks like Batman has claimed its first victim. I quit. I did my do. I quit. Saber's headed for solid ground, but Siren and Hawk are ready to continue their roller coaster grudge match. Who has what it takes to ride the longest? Place your bets. Dude. How you doing? I'm David Charvet. We're back with theme parts of Go-Go. We did a little shopping at Toontown. I love this outfit, it's great. Anyways, uh, we want am you- Am I having a good hair day or Definitely, what? definitely, you okay. kidding? Anyways, we want you to check this out while we do a little more shopping. We'll see you in a bit. Hi, this is Dolly Parton, and welcome to Dollywood. People around the world have come to know her through her music, also through her movies. But to her former neighbors in this rural part of East Tennessee, Dolly Parton is not only the hometown girl made good, she's the heart and soul of the local theme park. Dollywood is located in the uh, foothills of the Smoky Mountains in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and probably is one of the most quaint parks in the country. And the best thing that Dollywood really has to offer is the uh, lineup of shows that they have. And of course, Dolly, when she shows up. Well, I met him on a Sunday and my heart stood still. I do run, 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 I do run, run. Dolly shows up in Dollywood as often as her performing schedule permits. But she's especially likely to be on hand when the park opens a new attraction. All right, great. Thank you very much. We decided to add a $7 million, seven acre expansion dedicated totally to the 50s. So we have areas that I have named from things that have to do with my life. There's the Kaz Walker store. Kaz Walker is a man that uh, owned a chain of supermarkets in this area. He sponsored a radio and television show uh, with a, had a country band and I was part of uh, one of those bands when I started at the age of 10. So I kind of dedicated a store to him. Uncle Bill's Guitar Shop, it's an area where you can go in and buy all sorts of things. We have Red's Diner. It's a drive-in uh, restaurant, but actually this was the restaurant to go in Sevierville when I was growing up, where they had hamburgers, milkshakes, french fries, and that's what we're serving now, just like the old days. We have every kind of music imaginable here in the park, from gospel to mountain music, the old folk music with the instruments. We make dulcimers here on the park. We have all the, uh, these great craftsmen, and we have the crafts fair every fall where people come from all over the world that do all these wonderful crafts. It's like going back in time. We have all the wonderful things like it was 100 years ago in the Smoky Mountains. Parts of Dollywood may be rooted in the past, but others deal very much with the present and the future. Well, right now, we're in one of my favorite areas of the park. This is called the Eagle Sanctuary. We have a lot of birds of prey that are, uh, have been injured, so we keep them here, and they lay their eggs. We have an incubator house uh, on the other side of the mountain where we hatch the eggs, and then we actually do release uh, the little bald eagles. We know they're bald because they keep combing their feathers over the top of their head. <laughs> That's how we know they're bald eagles. But we're very proud of this. This is um, the National Foundation to Protect the Bald Eagle. The bird sanctuary, the musical performances, and the crafts may be main draws of Dollywood, but there are also the rides. We don't have a, what you call the world famous roller coasters here. I often joke and say we don't have Space Mountain, but we have Twin Peaks. But, <laughs> but actually, we do have the best non roller coaster rides in the United States, like the Slide Winder, where you come plumb down the mountain. I'm as proud of this, if not more, than anything that I've ever done. So it's very important to me, it's very personal to me. And I'm very involved in all of the park. It was a, a wonderful business move on my part, too. But it also has provided a lot of wonderful jobs for relatives of mine, friends of mine, neighbors that I grew up with. So I'm proud of the fact that I brought something back to this area that we can all be proud of. Dollywood is just one of several theme parks owned and operated by Silver Dollar City, Inc., 
whose flagship property in Branson, Missouri, was built around the town's very first tourist attraction, Marvel Cave. The cave um, got, began to be built around. I mean, they discovered it back in the 20s, and then in the 40s, the Hirschen family came in and, and bought it, and it just grew. And around it grew a musical theme park. Music plays a major role in the life of Silver Dollar City. It's also the central theme of Opryland in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, it's lonely, but I'm a hanging in, a hanging out the line with you again. Opryland Park in itself was really the, uh, the first show park. And that's the nice thing about Opryland, because they've stayed to their particular theme. Uh, the Wabash Cannonball, Old Mill Scream, a lot of their rides are very music related. And some of them are just plain fun. Well, the Hangman at Opryland is definitely the biggest attraction. It's the first inverted roller coaster in this part of the country, and it's going to create a lot of press for the park itself. Roller coasters and other rides may make news at Opryland, but that's not what most patrons come to experience. The shows are the main ticket here, as they are in Silver Dollar City or Dollywood, where entertainment always comes from the heart. If you wanna know if he loves you so, it's in his kid. That's where it is. Oh yeah, it's in his kid. That's where it is. From elegant singing to ear-piercing screaming, when E's adventure through America's greatest theme parks returns, it's all aboard the meanest, leanest coasters in the country. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. Welcome to Theme Parks of Gogo. We'll see you in a bit. Hi, I'm uh, David Charvet. Hi, I'm Ricky Paul Golden. Sorry, buddy. You okay? We're just back from Thunder Mountain. If you like to scream on rides, check this out. You okay, buddy? may be the need for speed or the desire to be scared out of our minds that keeps us coming back for more so sit down and hold tight because we're going to take you on a twisting turning white knuckle ride aboard some of america's most spectacular roller coasters Since the turn of the century, adults and children alike have wanted the same thing from their roller coasters, hair-raising thrills. The grandfather of them all, the Coney Island Cyclone, uh, they didn't have much space on the beach to build it, so they built it within itself, and you twist in and out of yourself, and it's still got some of the greatest turns. Also, some pretty good turns on one of Ohio's favorite scream machines, the Beast. This record-setting coaster at Kings Island, outside Cincinnati, challenges all comers. As far as my dollar's concerned, probably the best wooden roller coaster ever built. Uh, it's also the longest ride uh, anywhere in North America, a little over four minutes. say everything is bigger and better in their state and roller coasters are no exception that includes the texas giant at six flags over texas if you like speed fast turns if you like smooth corners if you like rough dips uh the texas giant basically has it all for you <laughs> The wooden roller coaster has given riders rip-roaring adventure for a hundred years. But the newest rage in thrill machines is the inverted roller coaster, like this fearsome specimen, the Raptor at Cedar Point. What that means is inverted, you hang below the track, you sit in like a ski lift chair, 
and your feet kind of dangle below you. And as you take off, the floor drops out, your feet dangle, and you go through all kinds of corkscrews, all the various elements, including the loops with your feet dangling. If dangling your feet at 60 miles an hour isn't your speed, then you may want to tuck your toes into the Steel Phantom at Kennywood Park in Pennsylvania. The Steel Phantom at Kennywood is an awesome piece of ski. I mean, you go up that first hill, and usually at the dip at the end of the first hill, that's where the strongest piece of excitement comes on a steel coaster. But then you go up to the second hill, and that's where the long, long drop. It's, two, it's over 220 feet drop. And what you feel is total exhilaration when you hit the bottom of that hill. Long drops and high speeds also make hearts pound on Cedar Point's 72 mile an hour, 205 foot high Magnum XL 200. It's a fantastic steel coaster, and it's first of the uh, mega coasters in the United States as far as the height. And it's a very, very strong, powerful roller coaster. No loops, no cute elements, just, uh, just flat out uh, thrill ride. Need more thrills? Then go west to Buffalo Bill's Casino in State Line, Nevada for Desperado, the fastest, highest roller coaster in the world. One unique thing about the Desperado, other than it being so tall and so, so powerful and fun, is the fact that you load actually in the casino. Whether you're upside down or right side up, child or adult, the reason we ride remains the same, thrill. There's no slowing down when E's look at America's most thrilling theme parks continues. Do you recognize this voice from far atop Magic Mountain's Viper? Jesus! Look at that! We'll show you who's screaming for help when Theme Parks A Go Go returns. And speaking of screaming, <laughs> Siren and Hawk are still hanging tough, but one gladiator's going to give in sooner or later. Welcome to theme parks at Go-Go. We're here in Splash Mountain, and we're going to go down one more ride. We'll see you in a bit. I've seen it all, ladies and gentlemen. Theme parks, beaches, unbelievable. Yeah, give me five. Right here. Yes. We rule. That's right. How you doing? My name is David Charvet from Theme Parks of Go-Go. We're drying off. Check this out. We'll be right back. Hi there. This is Kim Fields. Well, I am Kim Fields, and welcome to my home video at Magic Mountain with some of my friends. This is, of course, Daffy Duck, and this is Fog on Leghorn. And I brought some of my other friends, my fiance and some of his family members, Erica. Martha, Martha is always talking. Martha, so we are ready to have a good time on the coaster. So you guys ready? Yeah, let's go. Kim Fields and her friends may not know it yet, but their day at Six Flags Magic Mountain will be no day at the beach. They're about to test their survival skills on some of the most challenging rides on the West Coast. First up, Batman the Ride. Oh man, I'm scared. Kim has good reason to be scared. The G-forces on this ride are so great that the camera sometimes cuts out. But that's not enough to keep these riders from trying to quench their thirst for excitement. It's an unforgettable ride, you know. Um, when you sit down, there's no bottom there. There's really nothing, you know, around you, and you just feel so open and vulnerable, and then you're just twisting and turning and dipping, and it seems like it takes forever. 
Oh, it was tons of fun. Are you deaf now from my screaming? Yeah, you scream pretty good. Sorry. <laughs> We're going on Colossus now. It's an oldie, but still a goodie. Kim, a Magic Mountain veteran, knows how to make the most of her ride. Now, the best place for Colossus is either the front row or the back row. The simplicity of it is what I like. Your basic roller coaster, you know, the ups and the downs. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, the anticipation. The anticipation kills you. Oh. friends aren't the only Six Flags visitors to come for the fun provided by the roller coasters. Six Flags as a whole is quite unique from the rest of the theme parks in the country because we are known for the best rail rides. There's a lot of rides that are similar at the parks, um, but each, each park has its own unique landscape and its own unique rides. Six Flags operates 11 theme parks in seven major regions across the country. In fact, you can't go within a day's drive without coming across one of the Six Flags parks. In New Jersey, Six Flags operates two parks, Six Flags Great Adventure, which is a theme park, and Six Flags Wild Anim Animal Safari, which is one of the um, largest wild animal safaris in the world. And in Houston, Six Flags operates um, Astro World, which is a theme park, and then Six Flags Water World, which is their water theme park. Six Flags was uh, some of the innovators of some of the, the things that you know of today, for example, the one price ticket started at Six Flags Over Texas, the first steel tubular roller coaster, the uh, first uh, man-made whitewater rafting ride, which is um, Roaring Rapids opened at Six Flags Over Texas, and the Broadway-style musical review. Here in Southern California, we have an unbelievable product mix for the entire family, including a six-acre Bugs Bunny world, and just a, you know, a beautiful park to walk around and come and see. So it's definitely a lot of product for every member of the family. Kim Fields and her comrades, however, were in search of neither cartoon characters nor beauty. More thrills were on their agenda. Oh, Lord, we're going on Viper after lunch. I don't know if that was such a great idea, but hey, I'm excited about Viper. Oh yeah, we're gonna do some major screaming on this one. Oh my God, look at that! Viper, um, what can you say about that ride? Keep your head back, take your earrings off, otherwise your ears are gonna get pounced on. But all those, you know, loops and everything, it's great, it's fun. After shaking, rattling, and rolling on Viper, Kim and company were ready for something a little more sedate. They didn't find it at Roaring Rapids. The rides, of course, are always awesome. The thrills and the spills if you go on Roaring Rapids. Um, so it was fun. Well, we've had a blast here at Six Flags Magic Mountain, thanks to E and all the staff here for making us just have a great old time. We've been tossed and turned and drenched and flipped and everything, so now it's just time to chill. Good night, everybody. When E's one-hour trip through America's best theme parks continues, David Charvet looks for help on the Indiana Jones adventure. Help me, Mom! Plus, who will give in first, Hawk or Siren? Find out which gladiator is the toughest when we return. And we're back. How you doing? I'm David Survey, and these are the boys here. We're reaching the final of the show at the moment that we've been waiting for, Indiana Jones Adventure. What do you say, guys? Should we do it? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. All right. Come on. I was anxious that it would be a very exciting ride, that it would have the same kind of thrill and excitement that the movies had. It had to feel like the culture in the movie. It had to feel like Indiana Jones. You had to feel like the character trying to get out of scrapes and avoiding the bugs and the snakes. You know, I think it's accomplished that. It's a, it's a very thrilling ride.
The Indiana Jones Adventure is the biggest attraction in Disneyland's 40-year history. Although it opened in 1995, the ride was first proposed back in 1987. A lot of the uh, delay was due to the technology. We, we had to develop a lot of new technology in order to make the ride feasible. Of course, feasible just isn't good enough when it comes to Disney. They've made the ride unpredictable. By utilizing state-of-the-art technology, this attraction presents a slightly different adventure every time you ride it. Well, hopefully it means people want to go back on it again and see it more than once, because there are various versions of the ride. Is, which is a new feature of this particular ride. On opening day, there were plenty of would-be explorers eager to climb aboard Indy's Jeep. I think we're going to get ready for a little, uh, uh, a little action, a little adventure. If it's anything like the movies, uh, it's going to be a, a tremendous success, no question about it. I'm kind of apprehensive, actually. Why? Uh, because i got to wear a hat, you know. I want that big ball, you know, to come chasing me down the thing like it did in uh, Indiana Jones, you know. After four decades, Disneyland has become expert at fulfilling the high expectations of its many guests. In fact, Disneyland is second only to the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World, Florida, when it comes to attracting the most visitors in the country. Disney was a very creative man and a genius, and he has done more for families and for children than any other person that I can think of. It's pretty interesting. My son's four years old. I mean, he hasn't been mass marketed out the wazoo yet. And yet he knows this is the place in the world for kids to come. But let's not forget about the young at heart. After all, it's finally David's turn to board the Indiana Jones adventure. Hey, Channel, get ready for the ride of your life. Indiana Jones coming straight at you. But before we let David go, one final excavation tip. There's a rumor, I guess it's kind of a myth, that every Imagineering team puts some image of Mickey Mouse in their attraction. And I can't say if that's true or not, but if it was true, I would look for it in the mummy chamber. Good luck trying to find it, David. Oh, my God. Oh. I know I'm hosting the rest of this segment, but I know I'm not going to die. <laughs> David recovers from his adventure. We'll have time to crown the winner of our roller coaster endurance test. You'll remember we started the show with three brave gladiators on Batman the Ride at Magic Mountain. But now we're down to two Hawk and Siren, Siren and Hawk. Who will throw in the towel first? Okay, I've had enough. And the championship goes to Siren. What a ride! <laughs> While Siren takes her solo victory lap, just what she needs, it's time for us to say goodbye back at the Indiana Jones Adventure with David Charvet and a special friend. But, you know, I got one question for you. I really didn't see you on the ride. I mean, you were supposed to be on there, and I didn't see you. No, no, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. I didn't see you. Anyways, we come to the final of the show. We want to thank you for watching E. This is Indiana Jones Adventure in Disneyland. Take care. We'll see you later. What? You want to go back? Another time? Are you sure? Okay, fine, let's do it. Come on. No, thank you, E, for including me on this one.